Welcome guys. Uh, thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing the videos. Uh, today I'll be doing a review for a product that was sent to me by the vendor. I believe it also happens to be the manufacturer. Um, it's an OBD2 reader. It's Artilink 300 by Topdon. Topdon is the manufacturer that ended up sending this product to me. Um, and I'll link it down below where you can get it on Amazon and other places as well. Basically, uh, any car above 96 and above, um, you can use this product. You can read the codes, you can clear the codes, you can look at the oxygen sensors, uh, how lean they're running. Um, <clears throat> you can get the car VIN number, you can frame, uh, freeze the frames and so forth. Uh, so what we're gonna do is unbox it, I'll do a review on it. Um, again, this I didn't buy it, this was sent to me by the vendor, so I'm gonna do a uh, complete unboxing review and then we'll plug it in the car and see how it plays. The only issue I have plugging in the car is at the moment there's no check engine lights. So I wish I could show you, but I'll show you how to use it, how to attach it, and then go through the menus and so forth. So let's uh, go through it and unbox it. So it looks like <clears throat> the device by itself is this much. And then there's probably gonna be a foot or so of the cable, the OBD2 cable that comes with it. It's not wireless, it doesn't plug in your phone or computer. It's a simple um, OBD2 reader that supports six or seven languages right off the box. Um, one good thing is it does not require any batteries, no recharging, nothing, so let's open it. It comes like this. Um, <clears throat> so this is the actual product. Um, uh, let's see how long the cable is. I have a feeling it's gonna be a foot, but let's see if it's longer. Actually, I take that back. It's longer, so this is nice. Um, it has about maybe two plus feet, three feet of a cable that you can attach to the car um, and get a reading done. It's super light. Uh, it's not heavy. Um, fits in your palm, I guess, because you can see um, I can fit it and hold it with one hand, no problem. Uh, there's a screen on top. There's a screen up here. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be black and white. It's not going to be colored. We'll plug and see with it. Uh, very simple. There's up and down arrows, which are rubbers, and then there's OK and exit, and that's it. Uh, there's a model number in the back. It says top down, RD Link 300, um, all rights reserved, and then there's a website and email support as well. Uh, what else comes in here? There is these pamphlets. There's uh, instructions. There's also a quick start guide that comes in multiple languages I mentioned. It's supported, I believe, in English, French, German, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and Russian. Um, This is definitely plastic. I wish, one thing I did wish, maybe the edges, there was a like a rubber a seam or glove or something. So when you drop, not that this is gonna break, but if you dropped it, it wouldn't break or scratch or scuff like that. I know it's OBD2 sensor, it's not your phone, but just thinking about it. But one of the things I do actually like about this is it fits in your hand perfectly fine. There's like different ones, the chubbier ones, and there's like the professional ones, which are like, I don't know, two grand or so. Plus you have to put in that every single uh, update because you can put the ECU chip in there for different cars and so forth and the different years. But this one is pretty simplistic. Um, don't mind it at all. So OBD cable, like I said, up and down button, LCD screen, confirm button, exit and so forth. Um, that's about it. There's nothing else in the box. We're gonna put the box away. So before we get anywhere, um, Again, this will work in a OBD sensor, whether you have a American car, German car, or a Japanese car, any cars, this is universal. So it's not like, you know, Beamer Link or something else, or Beamer Code, or OBD 11 and so forth. Uh, this is generic, will work with any cars. The nice thing it does is you can read codes and you can clear your check-in light and so forth. Um, I do wanna test one thing. <clears throat> if it would read the battery. Uh, and again, I think that's gonna be dependent on how the car is coded and what's, uh, what kind of software coding is set up in here and what it can read and cannot read. But we'll see when we get it there. But overall, uh, it's pretty, size is pretty compact. I like it, plastic, um, nothing fancy to it. So if you were to drop it, 
it's not gonna break or anything like that that easy. So let's get it plugged into the car and we'll go from there. So here we are in the car. I'm gonna run this test with this top down and review the product using an Acura. This is a TSX. Um, at the moment, I'll show you before I start, there are no check engine lights. So let's see what happens. On the Acura, I have it on the left-hand side, right by the, where the speaker is. Different cars will be either further down or it could be on the right side of the steering, but it's going to be in the driver's seat. Um, so let me show you before I get started. Uh, at the moment, you can see there are no check engine lights in the car. Uh, handbrake is on, so that's why you see that. But other than that, there's nothing else going on in the car. So we have it plugged in. Um, I would definitely say the cable is about a good three feet. So hopefully you guys can see the screen. Um, and this happens to be the color screen. Uh, so there are four options when you log into main menu and they get booted up. Again, there's no batteries in here. There's diagnose, lookup, setup, and help. So we're going to click on diagnose, click OK. It's going to go through the processing, basically. I'm pretty sure it's reading the ECU and so forth and a canvas. Um, Usually this takes about good uh, five to 10 seconds. Once you get loaded, it's the one of these menus in here. Click OK. Once you click OK, you're in the diagnostic menu. Um, you can read codes, you can erase codes, the IMS readiness, you can do data stream, freeze frame. You can also do the oxygen sensor test. And we'll see how lean the sensors are running. Uh, bank one, bank two, and so forth. Uh, come down. On the right hand side, it tells us how many different options there are, sub menus there are within this diagnostic menu. It's nine. We were on six of nine, so that's nice. It tells you where you are, how many more to go. So, on the second page, essentially, there is onboard monitoring, EVAP system, and then vehicle information. Vehicle information will give you, for example, the VIN number of the vehicle. So, see, it's getting the VIN data. So, here you can do VIN, CID, CVN, depending on where you are, and it'll give you that information. So, click exit to go back. And then we're going to go up. So let's start with reading the codes. Uh, click OK. The vehicle has no fault codes. Again, like I showed you, there's no check engine light on the car. So obviously telling me no fault codes showed up. So click exit in here. We're going to do erase codes. We're going to click OK. Uh, clear reset emissions related diagnosis. Are you sure? You click on OK to reset it. Obviously. Uh, please turn the ignition on with the engine off. Please enter a key to continue. So basically, I was running this with the car on. So I want to turn it off. And I'm going to turn it on the on position. And I'm going to click OK. Uh, it's telling me it's erasing codes, uh, which should be OK because there's no codes to erase. Uh, clear mission, information failure. Please confirm and turn ignition on. Ignition was on. Um, engine off, which it was off. Um. Okay, so it gave me a failure on reset again. Uh, that's probably because there's no codes to clear, and that's why we're getting this. I'm not going to keep trying it again. My left ignition on on the on position. Um, so I am readiness if I go in there. Um, click OK. You can do since DTC clear this drive cycle and so forth. Uh, let's go back in here. I'm going to start the car because I don't want to leave it running and kill the battery while we make this video. Um, so then you can do data stream. Um, you can get to get supported data. It's loading the data right now. And here you can check the fuel system one, fuel system two, it's telling you the EC2, ECT temperature. Um, SHR, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much of this. I know RPM it's telling me, or is the, that's fine. The map sensors, I believe. Um, Um, MAF, there's the oxygen sensors, I believe as well in here, OBD, 
there are 35 different sub menus in here. The runtime, how long the car's been probably running, um, evap. So that's it for data stream. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to come out of there. You can freeze frame. Let's do O2 sensor test because I think we should be able to get some sort of readings in here. So obviously it's telling me there's sensor one, bank one, bank one, sensor two. So let's do bank one, sensor one first. Let's see. Test 80 data, 87 data. Let's test the first one. So it's telling me the values, min, max, pass, and so forth. Um, let's do bank sensor two now. And again, uh, I don't see min max value for this, but then I see a pass. So let me go back and do another test on here for the 9E data. Okay, so the second one for the O2, the 9E test 9E data shows me the min value, the max value, and status of being passing. So it's nice. Depending on where you live, you might have emissions testing or e-check, and depending on the county and so forth. So you could use this to see how lean their car is running for the oxygen sensors. Um, go back out. And then you have your EVAP system in here. Uh, leak test not supported. Okay, so it's telling me evaporative system leak test is not supported with this one. So I'm going to leave it alone. And then there's onboard monitoring. Let's see if this one has anything. Uh, so there's catalyst monitoring, there is VVT, variable valve uh, timing, monitor bank one, there's EVAP, purge flow monitoring, uh, misfire for cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three. Obviously, this is a four-cylinder car, so it's only telling me four-cylinder. And then we, let's say if you check what happens in misfire cylinder one, um, even misfire count, misfire count last, let's look at this. So obviously there has no been no misfire, so that's why there you see zero counts in here. Um, let's go to evap monitoring. Let's see what that's showing us. Okay, let's go to the second evap. Purge flow monitor, and let's do that, and we'll check on the catalyst. Okay, it just says pass. I don't see the values in here. Um, and then also it could be, depending on the car and what car reads, can read to the OBD too, so it might not just be top down. It might also be a limitation on the car as well. Um, so there were nine menus in here. Obviously, last four are the four uh, cylinder misfires, if there were any. So EVAP system, we already tested that. Onboard, we tested. Vehicle information gives you the VIN number of the car. And click OK. And then we're back to, so let's go back to, if you wanted to do a lookup. Um, so obviously, this is not touch screen. That's what I wanted to show you right here. Uh, if you want to do setup, you can do setup, or you can go into lookup. Um, and then basically if you had a code P0126, you can go look it up and it'll give you all the description for it and so forth. So you can also do a lookup in here and get all the dictionary values for your um, check engine values. Okay guys, so we reviewed this product so far. <coughs> It does what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to read the codes. It reads the codes. You can clear the codes. You can look up the codes. Um, pretty satisfied with it overall. Um, it's durable, looks durable to me. And the one of the things like I mentioned earlier too, uh, the cable is long enough so where you can put in the car, sit down and do it. I do have one recommendation for the vendor, for the manufacturer. If it's possible for the future uh, iterations, generations of this top-down model, top down model to have maybe like your uh, battery voltage lookup as well, which will save a lot of people a lot of headaches because they don't have to go to auto store. They can just plug it in get the voltage out of that and see the cold cranks or so forth. That'll be nice to have. 
other than that, um, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, please put them down below. I will also put the link for this um, on, on my channel as well. So you guys can click on it and go from there. Again, this was provided to us by Top Down. I would just wanted to do a simple review and unboxing video for this. Thank you guys. Have a great time.